I'm Coyote Peterson. This morning, we're in the Sonoran Desert, and right here next to me is a creosote bush, which is gonna lead me to one very special lizard. Ah. Oh, dang it. Oh, well, we know where he is. For anyone that has ever spent time exploring in the Southwest, I'm willing to bet there's a good chance that you have seen a lizard. However, there's a big difference between seeing and catching a lizard. Some, like the regal horned lizard, are rather slow, which makes them easy to catch. Then you have collared lizards, which if you're quick enough to catch them, there's a good chance they will also turn around and catch you. I got a hold of him and he's got a hold of me. Look at that, ah, geez. With their teeth. Holy cow, all right, um, whoa, those teeth are super sharp. When it comes to Arizona's Sonoran Desert, one of my favorite species is the desert iguana, which is actually pretty easy to track down as long as you follow the right signs in the environment. This is the creosote bush. Oh, it smells so good. This is one of the most fragrant plants that you have here in the Sonoran Desert. Now, what these iguanas are looking for is this right here. These little flowers are breakfast. All we gotta do is follow the trail of creosote bushes and hopefully it's gonna lead us to one of these little lizards. One key to having an animal encounter is being able to be patient, which is oftentimes easier said than done, especially when dealing with the heat of the desert. Oh, it is scorching hot. It is about 105 degrees. We've been out here since about six o'clock this morning. We're approaching noon right now, which is okay because the desert iguana does better in high heat than most other lizard species. We are in a field of creosote bushes and mesquite trees. We've been looking for hours. I didn't think it was gonna be this tough to find one. As our search continued, the endless expanse of desert scrubland became more and more disorienting. The sun beating down, its beams of light slowly cooking us as we rounded spine-covered plants and stared into empty creosote bushes. I mean, they're literally thousands of these creosote bushes out here and you can see how sparse they are. I mean, you can pretty much walk up like this, look in, no lizard, keep moving. Time seemed to be dragging on forever until finally I spotted our target. Cool. There's one right there. Well, it's a lizard. I can't tell if it's a desert iguana, but there's definitely a lizard right there basking in that tree. You see its tail hanging down? Oh, it looks like a desert iguana. I can see its tail. Oh, this is it. Okay, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch it. This is the first one that we've seen. He's pretty low. He's probably got a burrow right under there. Um, okay, follow me. Let me see if we can get him. This is just, we're gonna have one shot at this. It is, it's a desert iguana. You see he's just up on that branch. He's holding on, he's got his foot wrapped around that branch. Okay, I'm pretty much just gonna have to make a jump into that creosote bush and try to grab him. Are you ready? One, two, three. Ah. Ah. Oh. He got right down that burrow. <sighs> Dang it. Well, we know where he is. Oh, did you see how fast they are? Unbelievably fast. All right, first thing we need to do is block up any other possible exits for this burrow. And then what I'm gonna use is a bottle of water, dump that down the hole, and hopefully I'll get him flushed back out. All right, we ready? Not the smartest thing to do with your last bottle of water in the desert, but when you wanna catch a desert iguana, sometimes you don't have many options. During monsoon season, burrows flood on a daily basis. So what I'm doing is replicating a completely natural occurrence. Uh, uh, this burrow might be really deep. <sighs> Shoot. We're gonna need more water. We're gonna need more water. 
Things don't always go according to plan, and when it comes to catching lizards, this is often the case. Now, it's fair to say that these reptiles are considerably faster than I am. However, I'd argue that they definitely are not smarter than this coyote. Dang it. <sighs> well, we know where he is. It was time to call in plan B, the man-made monsoon. Now in the desert, when huge monsoon rains pour down, all these burrows flood, which drives animals up out of the ground. We're going to pour gallons of water into this burrow, hopefully get the desert iguana to shoot out of there, and I'll be able to catch it. This is gonna be tough, but we're not gonna give up yet. We sent our wildlife biologist, Mario, huffing across the desert and back to our vehicle, where he would retrieve our emergency five gallon reserve of water. I gotta sit here underneath this curioso bush and watch the hole in case the lizard comes out. Uh, this is literally a stakeout now. Anything could be living in that hole, so it makes me a little nervous just laying here. But, whew, that's my move. I guess I could sit here and practice. Because we're gonna get one shot. If we get these gallons of water here and that lizard does pop back up out of the burrow, if I don't get it on the first try, we're not gonna have another shot at it. 45 minutes later, and Mario returned with the water. All right, we're back. Bring it on in, Mario. Mario has huffed across the desert and is brought back with him. What is that, five gallons of water? Five gallons. If that doesn't get this iguana out of that burrow, you guys will have seen your first official miss on breaking trail. See, everybody's always asking, Coyote, do you always catch the animals? This is truly one of those instances where I think we're gonna release this episode even if I don't catch it, just because of how much work we've gone through to try to get it. Okay, you guys ready? I'm gonna tip it and just kind of start to funnel it in there. Ready? Yep. One, two, three. The method I'm using to draw the iguana up from this burrow simulates a completely natural occurrence in the desert during monsoon season. So this is in no way hurting the animal or the environment. It's a lot of water. Something's moving. Something's definitely coming up. I can hear it. Got him. Oh my oh. God. <laughs> Did you guys see that? <laughs> Could you see his little head sticking up? Oh man, your hand's dirty. <laughs> oh my gosh. My hand is shaking. I didn't know when I should actually reach for him. And we actually got it. Can you guys believe that that just happened? Oh my gosh. <sighs> that may be the most impressive catch I have ever pulled off in my life. Did you think you were actually going to catch him? I did not. I thought it was pretty hopeless um, as we sent Mario back to get that giant jug of water, literally sitting here for what, a good 45 minutes staring at the burrow, nothing coming out. I figured it was connected to one of these other holes and he was long gone, but sometimes if you wait it out, you can catch the desert iguana. Now this is a lizard species that is very active during the day. As you can see, incredibly quick as it jumped out of that creosote bush and darted into a burrow. And they're pretty docile. If you can manage to catch one of these lizards, as you can see, it's not trying to bite me. It's really just hanging out at this point. All right, bring your camera in a little bit closer there. Look at the eyes of that lizard. Now this is primarily a diurnal species, which means that they're out during the day. That's why they're so in tune to everything that's moving around in their environments. Now, the cryptic color pattern on this lizard allows it to perfectly blend into these sandy environments. And their bellies are incredibly smooth, which allows them to quickly scurry across hot sand surfaces. Now the desert iguana is related to the green iguana, which is native to Central and South America. But here in the Southwest, this is the only iguana that you're going to bump into. Let's talk about this lizard's tail for a second. Look at how long that is. About twice the length of the body. Now they use these tails to help them balance in the trees when they're trying to eat the flowers of the creosote bush, but also when they're on the ground and they're running, they can almost lift their body just slightly up off the sand, and the tail works like a rudder as it helps them navigate across the desert terrain. Now one of the coolest 
and grossest facts about this lizard is that they don't only eat those delicious little creosote bush flowers, they also eat the fecal pellets of other desert iguanas. Do you guys know what a fecal pellet is? That's a poop. You eat other desert iguanas poop. The reason that they eat these fecal pellets is to balance out the amount of cellulose that is in their gut. So gross. Let me smell your breath. Doesn't smell like he's been eating any turds this morning. It smells like he's been eating some creosote bush flowers. Kind of gross, but also kind of neat at the same time. Well, it certainly wasn't easy, but a little bit of patience and five gallons of water, and we managed to catch ourselves one awesome desert iguana. Time to get this little guy back into the wild and see what else we can find out here in the Sonoran Desert. I'm Coyote Peterson. Be brave. Stay wild. We'll see you on the next adventure. After the first miss, we definitely considered throwing in the towel, but with a little teamwork, we pulled it off. And in the end, getting up close with the desert iguana was totally worth the effort. If you thought that was one wild adventure, check out the time I was captured by the collared lizard. And don't forget, subscribe to join me and the crew on this season of Breaking Trail.